What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Founder of Apple supplier Foxconn and one of Taiwan's richest people, Terry Guo, has announced he will make a bid for the presidency. Rick Larratt reports. Terry Gore, the billionaire founder of Foxconn, which manufactures Apple products, arrives back in Taiwan after a trip to the U.S. And at the airport, a big announcement. He wants to be Taiwan's next president. This is not 72-year-old Gore's first bid for Taiwan's top job. In 2019, he lost out on the nomination for candidate for opposition party, the Kuomintang, or KMT. He later quit the party, which he apologized for profusely as he made his bid to represent the KMT at next year's elections. Despite big wins in local elections last year, polls show support is slumping for a KMT presidency. The party is beset by controversy and infighting, but has said they will pick their candidate by mid-June. A high-profile figure like Gore could prove popular with voters. Taiwan's ruling party, the Democratic Progressive Party, or the DPP, has only one candidate in mind. Vice President Lai ching De is seen as a natural successor to largely popular current President Tsai Ing-wen, who cannot run because of two-term limits. Then sometimes it does play out as a kind of difference between pro-U.S. and pro-China politics. And the DPP, as a historically a pro-independence party, is now thought of as more pro-U.S. The KMT as the pro-China party, or as having become the pro-China party, and is seen as more anti-U.S. Gore says Taiwan doesn't have to choose between the two. Presidential elections here in Taiwan are now than less than one year away, and there's plenty at stake from the rising cost of living to facing up to the threat from China. All eyes are now on the KMT and whether they think a figure like Gore can help turn things around for the party. Leon Lien and Rick Lowett in Taoyuan for Taiwan Plus. To find out more about Terry Guo's presidential ambitions and what they mean for Taiwanese politics, Rick Glarit spoke to political scientist Lev Nachman. Terry Gore is, a, is known as a businessman, a billionaire, one of Taiwan's richest people. He's not, you know, a mainstay on Taiwan's political scene. Could you tell us a little bit about him and how he might disrupt or change the presidential race between the two major parties? Yeah, so Terry Guo, of course, famous for uh, being the uh, former leader of Foxconn, uh, the company most famous for helping to make iPhones in China. Uh, and Terry Go tried to, has tried to run for president in the past uh, before he made some very big dramatic uh, announcements saying that the goddess Mazu had visited him in a dream telling him to run. Uh, and he ran for the KMT primary last time uh, and uh, did not win. Uh, and as a result, he ended up actually dropping out of the KMT. Uh, but now, of course, you know, it was kind of expected that if Terry Go was going to try to run again, that he would go back to the KMT. And Terry Go obviously thinks that he is the one that will bring the KMT victory next year. Who might he appeal to or what sort of characteristics or political background or experience do you think he has that might mean that he's the one that could win the presidency? I think what he would argue is that he can appeal to the moderate voter a bit more than, say, some of the deep blue candidates. Uh, I think in particular, the KMT needs to be able to tap into that um, kind of uh, middle vote. Uh, and I think Terry Goh is hoping that he's going to be able to offer that appeal. Now, whether or not, you know, the moderate voters in Taiwan buy that is a different story. I think there's been some public opinion polling that looks at Terry Goh's name, uh, and I don't think it's as popular as someone like Hoyo is right now. Uh, now, I think Terry Goh is going to try to do quite a bit of campaigning over the next uh, few weeks to try to show that he could be the person that is the moderate, pragmatic KMT candidate. Uh, but whether or not uh, the KMT voter base is receptive to that, I think, is a different story. And could you tell us a little bit more about how questions over Taiwan's relations with both the U.S. and with China hangs over Taiwan politics? And how might Terry Gore try to position himself in that big question? 
So I think everyone is looking very closely to the U.S.-Taiwan relationship going into 2024, especially with Tsai being there right now. Uh, and of course, you know, the ongoing question of uh, if there is another DPP president, uh, will Taiwan and the PRC be able to ever establish formal channels of communication? Uh, and because Terry Go, I think, is going to try to position himself as someone who can both establish formal channels with the PRC and maintain a good relationship with the U.S., I think that's really what he's going to try to campaign on. President Tsai Ing-wen is on the last leg of her trip to the Americas. She arrived in Los Angeles on Tuesday after a visit to Belize, a diplomatic ally in Central America. Before she left Belize, Tsai attended an exhibit showcasing the achievements of the Women's Economic Empowerment Project, an initiative supported by Taiwan. She also visited a sheep and goat breeding facility that was built with Taiwanese help. Tsai's trip has been marked by high-level meetings with officials in the U.S. and Central America. Taiwan's presidential office earlier confirmed she met with Hakeem Jeffries and U.S. senators during her two-day stop in New York. Tsai was scheduled to meet with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy Wednesday morning, U.S. time. The president of France has said there's no reason for the world to fall into antagonistic blocks as he began a visit to Beijing. Emmanuel Macron and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, who also arrives in China on Wednesday, are scheduled to hold talks with Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Beijing's position on Russia's invasion of Ukraine is expected to be at the top of the agenda. Von der Leyen last week said Beijing's stance toward Moscow will be a determining factor in ties going forward. To find out more about the visit, our reporter James Chater spoke with Zuza Anna Ferenczi, an expert in EU-Taiwan relations based in Taipei. There are many issues on the table during this visit, including export controls, economic coercion, as well as Beijing's position on the war in Ukraine. What do you think will be the Europeans' key objectives of this visit to China? I think the number one priority will be the war in Ukraine. Now, ever since the war started, uh, the EU wanted China to play a more constructive role, and clearly this has not been the case. Uh, China has amplified Russia's disinformation, but also has shown political support, uh, and this has did not go well down in, in Europe. I think Beijing has understood that there is European unity behind the, 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 the situation in Ukraine, and the fact that the two leaders travel together sends a strong message to Beijing that there is European Unity. China did hit back at a recent speech by von der Leyen in which she said the bloc needed to be bolder on China. How would you assess the mood right now between the EU and China? Well, EU-China relations have been deteriorating for quite some time now, and I think we have hit a very low point in which political and economic issues are equally on the table. So I think also Macron's visit will be an opportunity for Macron and also the president of the European Commission to try to uh, discuss uh, the lack of reciprocity, the, the trade imbalance, uh, the economic ties, and all the many grievances that Europeans have uh, with China. But at the same time, I think we need to be realistic. I do not expect any major breakthroughs. Do you think the European presence in China while Taiwan's president meets with the U.S. House Speaker could in some way temper Beijing's reaction? Europe is not interested in going back to business as usual, but there is an opportunity now to rebuild perhaps cooperation on a more, uh, in a more balanced way. However, I do not think that this will impact the way China regards its core issues on which it does not compromise, meaning Taiwan. So because... Beijing likes to compartmentalize issues. I believe that it will be very careful to project an image that Taiwan remains a core national interest and it will not compromise on it. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, we leave you with images of children playing in the snow as unusually heavy April snowfalls sweep through Serbia. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time.